All right, I want to give you all time to come in. I want to say hello to everybody. And uh, I want to, of course, say welcome to Community Check-In. We're here, y'all. We live. We are here and we are live. Um, come on in. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Hello, hello, good afternoon. Deacon Burton, you're the first one, so there is no everyone. Ah, there we go. People are just, just when I said that, more people started coming in. Um, it's good to see uh, you all as you all are coming in. In just a moment, I want to talk to those of you who are not watching this live. That means uh, we've already done this, but you decided to come back and watch our check-in. I'm grateful for you. Um, <clears throat> For those of you who are watching a recording of this, then please feel free to go wherever uh, in this um, in this community check-in that will serve you best. Uh, I've got a very good, what I think is a very good topic today. Uh, of course, if you've read the topic, you know it is how to know when to fight. How to know when to fight. Amen. Uh, I don't want to uh, encourage any of our martial spirits, but you'll see when we get there what we are talking about today. We, uh, we've got a very, 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 very good topic today. I think it's going to be helpful to each and every one of us. I think it's going to bowl down each and every one of our alley. It's going to walk down each and every one of our street. Uh, but before we get to that, we just want to come in and just say hello. Um, all right. So for those of you who are continuing to come in, I want to say, of course, welcome to Community Check-In. You all know what's next. Y'all know what I'm about to ask you to do. Please take a moment to do what I'm about to do right now, and that is share this live and like it. Uh, we're going to give people time to come in, and I'm going to do exactly what I'm asking you all to do. Uh, I'm going to share this live and like it. Uh, what am I doing? I'm sharing this live and liking it. All right, here we go. There I am. I want to make sure my volume is all the way down. If you have not liked, and a couple of you have already liked, thank y'all so much. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all. Um, give me just a few seconds and I'm going to like, but I got to share. And if you on YouTube, even text somebody and just say, hey, check this out. Check, check this live YouTube out with me. Um, check in with me we are discussing I'll put quotations how to know when to fight if we got any fighters online today this is you're gonna love this today you're gonna love it you're gonna love it you're gonna love it all right i've liked i've shared now let's go in here and get down to business. Um, all right, let's say hello. Let's say hello. Let's say hello. Let me start with the first. Deacon Burke was here first and came in here and said good afternoon, everyone, and good afternoon uh, to you, Deacon Burton. Amy Cowherd says good afternoon. She's, she can swim, y'all. She can swim, and she's back hanging with us Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon. Margaret White Darby all the way from New Orleans. Margaret, we didn't get together when I was in New Orleans for me to get to tiramisu. What's the dessert? The dessert, Margaret. We didn't get a chance to connect, but I hope you had a happy Thanksgiving. I'm doing well today. Makia, great to see you and great to have you. Good afternoon. Uh, Amy's on doing double duty on YouTube and Facebook, and we love you on both. Uh, my cousin, Natalie Walker Jackson, is here straight out of and representing Banneker High School today. Michelle Gordon from Augusta is here. Yolanda Davidson is here all the way from, part of Kentucky are you from, Yolanda? But she lives in Fayetteville, you all, but she's representing Kentucky. And here's Janan Jane. Janan, good to see you. Good afternoon to you. Riverdale High School is in the house. Uh, and let's get down to business. Are we ready for our question of the day? 
Lexington, Kentucky. That's where Elon Davis is from. Lexington, Kentucky. Representing Lexington, Kentucky. I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, all right, beloved. Let's get into our question of the day. Here it is. Uh, when is the last time You know what? I need to change this question. There are two questions today. Because some of y'all may have never had a fight. And that's okay. We're not promoting fighting. But our question of the day is this. Have you ever had a fight? When is the last time you got into a fight? Have you ever had a fight? When is the last time you got into a fight. I feel like we've had this question before because I feel like I've discussed this for me. But that's our question of the day, you all. That's our question of the day. Uh, I want to hear from you. We're going to... Y'all, I want to give y'all some news, but I promised somebody I would tell them first. So I'm going to have to wait to Sunday. I want to give you all some news, but I, I, I promise somebody that they will be the first person that I would tell. And and um, I can't do it. I can't do it. Good afternoon, Lisa Gonzalez. Come in here and answer our question of the day. Uh, when is the last time? Have you ever had a fight? When is the last time you got into a fight? Y'all go ahead and do that. I'm about to get these prayers. Oh, I'm glad. I forgot. I came out of my prayer list, so I've got to. Let me see. If I open a blank document, then that ought to let me go into my files. Correct. Boom. And then file. And yeah. There we go. All right. All right. All right. Um. Gloria Robertson, Carol Merritt, and Amy Murphy. Michelle Gordon, I definitely have your prayer list. So um, there we go. We got our prayer list. Uh, when is the last time you all had a fight? That's the question. Have you ever had a fight? When is the last time you got into a fight? That's the question of the day. Come on in here, Dina. I'm from Detroit. I feel like you can't be from Detroit and never had a fight. Uh, I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but that's our question of the day. Dina, good afternoon to you, folks, family, and friends. This, y'all, we going somewhere here. Just stick with me. Stick with me. We are going somewhere. Um, no, no, no. We're talking physical. Thank you so much, Michelle. Gordon. So let me talk my answer while you all are coming into the comments and answering the question for yourself. Um, yes, I've had a fight. Uh, I'm not going to go into details, but the last fight I had, like physical punch punch fight um i had two fights in one night um this was in my college days uh i don't remember the year but uh i was hanging with brandon and them so it couldn't have been 97 it would have had been somewhere around 96 or 95 95 1995 1996 uh, i got into a fight long story short it was two fights that were kind of connected to each other so it's a long story, but I got into a fight at a party. And one thing led to another as we were arguing and fussing. And the reason we got into that fight, and then we were about to fight again after the party. And then we went out and the guys went to IHOP and we went to IHOP. Right now, if you ever go to the JR Crickets on, I think it's North and Piedmont, uh, that used to be an IHOP. That's the location of the last fight. We got to the IHOP. It was like Four of us ended up being six. Uh, it probably about anywhere from 10 to 15 of them. And it was just a big brawl. Um, your pastor's okay. Your pastor's okay. He held his own, y'all. He held his own. Uh, but it was about four of us. And it, the fight started with me and another guy. And <laughs> I don't remember exactly this, but this is what I was told. As the guy, I was what we decided we were gonna fight through. We walking around the IHOP to this clear clearing in the parking lot. He was in front, I was behind him. Somebody was behind me as he was walking. I was following him. Uh, he tried to like turn real quick and sneak me. 
And I thought I was ducking from the hip. And they said when I did that, somebody came behind and hit me in the back of the head. And then just a whole melee uh, um, fell out right there at the IHOP parking lot. And let me tell you how God looks out for babies and fools. I think I almost know I've told you this story. Two of our defensive linemen were coming. They were literally just driving by the IHOP because a lot of people hung at the IHOP when it was late night after the parties because it was open 24 hours and people were eating and things like that. Two of my teammates drove by and they saw this big fight about to happen. And they just decided, let's just go and look at the fight. And lo and behold, they get out their car and when they would park and they look and they saw, and they look and saw it was their boys, some of the, their teammates. And so they ran in. And if it had not been for those two, we probably, we would have had a, we would have been much closer. Uh, but so it was still outmanned. It was like six of us. And it had to be, y'all, I'm telling you about 10 or 15 of them. But we handled up on that day. God, we thank you, God. Thank you, God, for looking over and covering us, Lord. You cover us with your anointing and your protection and your offense. And um, the fight got broken up by a bunch of cops, uh, undercover cops. And that's my story. And now, y'all giving y'all answers so I can get out of this. Uh, good morning, Tracy Dawson. Look at our question of the day. Come on and talk to us, Tracy. Have you ever had a fight? When's the last time you got into a fight? I like this. Amy, this, I love this. Amy says, I've never had a fist fight. That's great. That is, that, I think that's phenomenal. I think that's phenomenal. Uh, I love this. What I was just talking the other day about how I don't want to ever have to fight again. Like, my goodness, y'all, I'm getting too old. I feel like I, I was telling somebody, you know, I look at these boxers who fight and they fight too long. That's how I feel about fighting. Like, I've never really gotten beat up. I've had some tough fights. But I've never just got mopped up on the floor. Uh, and so I feel like in some ways I'm undefeated, right? I mean, I've had some close fights that were, you know, some people said I won, some people said they won. So I feel like they draws. But I've just never really just gotten destroyed in a fight. And I feel like I don't want to ever have to feel that. So I feel like if I never fight again, I can retire and die being undefeated uh, in street fights. Uh, all right, here we go, you all. If you're just coming in, that's our question of the day. Have you ever had a fight? When is the last time you got into a fight? I love this. If you're talking physical, the last time M Michelle Gordon got into a fight, we fifth grade. This is hilarious. If you're talking verbal, that would be a week ago. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Because we're not going to talk about verbal fight. Lord Jesus, we're not going to tell all our business. I can't, I'm not even answer that question. Um, but thank you so much, Michelle Gordon, for your answer. We're answering these questions, uh, and I'm also getting prayer requests. Thank you so much, Yolanda, for your prayer request. I know y'all were fighting in, in Lexington, so come on here and answer the question, Yolanda. We want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. We know we. I believe y'all. There was some squabbing going down. That's what we used to call it in middle school. Um, I'm getting your prayer request, Yolanda, as well. Thank you so, so much. We're going to answer these questions and we are going to get into the word. We're talking about if you're new, have you ever had a fight? When is the last time you got into a fight? Patricia Burton says, the only fight I have ever been in is 65 years ago in first grade. My God, Elaine Smith hit me and I hit her back. My Lord. So you got the last lick. Come on here, Deacon Burton. You undefeated too then. In 65 years, the one fight you got in, you got the last lick. Mrs. Bush made us clean the restroom as punishment. And we laugh as we did it. My Lord, listen today, Deacon Burton. We play, we glad that you that the Lord held you and you are safe. Uh, Dina says, I had one fight in my life. It was in middle school with my best friend. And needless to say, that ended our friendship, my God. And I never liked fighting. And that my spirit changed to try to prevent my any type of fighting. Look at God. Praise God. Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go, you all. We're talking about when was, if you ever had a fight, and if so, when was your last fight? I fought Paula Fleury, Lisa Gonzalez says, after we got off the school bus. And I love when y'all include if you won or not. I won. Ha ha. We believe. We covered. Look like Fellowship of Love might be undefeated, y'all. 
I fought a guy whose name I can't even remember. He punched me in the ear, and that was the beginning and the end. Oh, my God. No, Lord Jesus. I'm. Where is he, Lisa Gonzalez? Where is he? Find out his name. We going to uh, send Amy to go get him. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. Lisa Gonzalez also says, I was a crazy, rebellious teenager. Um, y'all, some of y'all hadn't answered. And I know, I, y'all don't make me call you by name. Natalie, I know you wasn't over at Banneker and you never had no fight. Now, come on here. Come on in here and tell us about when's the last time you had a fight. You ain't even got to go into details. You just tell us when it was. Uh, you have to tell us what it's about. Here we go. Tracy Dawson says, only with my sisters. My God, don't tell me to, that Lisa, you and Tracy, done, uh, you and Tracy, you and Lisa done gone to blows. I won't hear it. I won't hear it. I'm going to ask y'all separately who used to win the fights. Uh, here we go. Margaret White Darby says, there were no punches thrown. I only had to slap her twice. My Jesus, in New Orleans? Margaret White Darby, you just pop popping people? Holy God, I reckon. Um, all right, here we go. Fourth to fifth grade, Yolanda Davidson says, uh, was bused to a predominantly white school. At recess, one of the boys beamed me with a snowball. My God. And I charged him, not thinking about how big he was, and punched him until someone pulled us apart. My God, Yolanda, you running up on boys? Well, note to self, um, note to self, no throwing snowballs at Yolanda. No throwing snowballs at Yolanda. All right, here we go. Uh, I want to I wanna transition into our uh, word today. I want to transition into our word today, and I hope this helps somebody. Um, our word comes from, and you all remember this, you all been here. You all know the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the story is found in the book of Daniel. In the book of Daniel, uh, chapter 3, we find uh, that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, well, let's just read it. Um, I'm trying to read the short version of it. So in Daniel chapter three, verse, I'm, I'm beginning with verse three, it says, so the satraps, the prefects and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates and all the officials of the provinces assembled for the dedication of the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Uh, when they were standing before the statue that Nebuchadnezzar had set up, the herald proclaimed aloud, you are commanded you are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, the harp, the drum, and the entire musical ensemble, you are to fall down and worship the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Listen to this, beloved. The Bible says, whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. Therefore, as soon as all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, the harp, the drum, and entire musical ensemble, all the peoples, the nations, and languages fell down and worshiped the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Accordingly, at this time, certain Chaldeans came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, Live forever. You, O king, you have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble shall fall down and worship the golden statue. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And listen to this, beloved. Here's where the story gets good. There are certain Jews who have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Listen to this. These were leaders, beloved, who were assigned over the province of Babylon. And listen to what they said. 
These, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, pay no heed to you, O king. They do not serve your gods, and they do not worship the golden statue that you have set up. The Bible says then Nebuchadnezzar, in a furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought in to see him. So they brought those men in before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true? O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up? Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble to fall down and worship the statue that I have made, well and good. Listen to what he says. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. Listen to what they say. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O king, let our God deliver us. But listen to this. This is the scripture that I think for me has become the most important scripture in the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So often we talk about the fire. So often we talk about them being saved in the fire. So often we talk about the fourth person in the fire that looked like the son of God. But this is the verse, beloved, that has come to mean the most to me when I listen to the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego story. Listen, can I rewind for a little bit? They say to King Nebuchadnezzar, who has pulled them in, the Bible is clear. Nebuchadnezzar is mad. He's in a rage. And he says, if you don't bow down when the music starts, if you don't dance to my tune, you will be thrown in a fire. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they answer, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. But listen to what they say. But if our God who we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O oh, king, let our God deliver us. But this 18th verse, Amy Cowherd, is the most important verse of this text to me. But if not, if our God does not, if our God will not, if our God cannot deliver us from this fight, listen to what they say. Be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, beloved, uh, have grown up in a Jewish tradition where they are not allowed uh, in their religious practice to serve or to bow down to any other God. Yet in this moment, they are captive and they are under the rule of King Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar has given this statue, you have got to bow down when the music starts. Nebuchadnezzar can, uh, says in so many words, I run this. If you don't do as I say, if you don't bow as I bow, if you don't do what, if you don't forsake and forget the edicts and the decrees of your religion and stick and live under my authority, you will be thrown in a blazing fire. Shadrach and Abed, Meshach and Abednego stand on their ground. And beloved, one of the most beautiful things about this story is something we don't talk about. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego have chosen to take up a fight against the laws of the land and against King Nebuchadnezzar. They have chosen to not bow down. They have chosen to not worship. They have chosen to not follow the rules of bowing down to the golden statue when the sounds of the musical ensemble begin. What we often don't talk about about this story is that so many times, People choose to fight when they know they can win. 
What's powerful about this story, Yolanda, what's magical about this story, Amy, what's great about this story, Janan, Margaret, here's what I love about this story. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have no guarantee of victory. In other words, beloved, they had found something so important to them that they were not willing to embark upon a fight because they knew they could win. They were willing to stand their ground and fight even when they knew they could lose. So often in talking to Bryce, Bryce is not a fighter. I don't think Bryce has ever had a fist fight in his life, uh, a real fist fight. He's tussled a couple of times uh, in, in sports and stuff like that. But Bryce probably never had a real fist fight in his life. One of the things I tell Bryce is, if you ever choose to fight, make sure you're not fighting over something small. Make sure you're not fighting over something petty. But here's what I tell him. If you ever feel like you have to fight, make sure you are so convicted about the fight you are about to begin that you're willing to lose. Do you hear that, beloved? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego feel so strongly, feel so strongly about the fight they're embarking upon that they are willing to lose the fight. That's a great litmus test for anything worth fighting for. But it's not just a litmus test for fighting. It's a litmus test for so many things in our life. It reminds us, it teaches us, and it tells us, Deacon Burton, that there are some things in life that are so important that we are to embark upon their calls even if we lose. Some, people, some of us won't start a business because we're scared of it failing. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego found something so important to them that they embarked upon it, even at the cost of losing. And beloved, today, I want to encourage us to find, to pray over, and to reflect over what things are we willing to embark upon that's worth losing. I would like to argue that the God we serve is worth fighting for even if we lose. So many people in the fight for freedom and abolition and slavery lost their lives. But here's what they decided, beloved. They decided that freedom was a fight worth losing for. I want to encourage you that there are things that we have to embark upon that even, if, even at the cost of losing, sometimes in relationships, beloved, We've got to stand up for ourselves, for our boundaries, for our respect, even at the cost of losing a relationship. Sometimes, beloved, life puts us in a position where we've got to stand up for our integrity, our dignity, at our job, even at the cost of losing our job. Sometimes, beloved, we've got to stand up for our dreams, even at the cost of losing. What I'm trying to tell you is losing ought not necessarily be the reason or the rationale we don't fight, we don't dream, we don't strive, we don't stand up for. I love this text. This is one of the most beautiful stories in the Bible for me because it is rare in the Bible that you see people standing up for God even knowing that they might lose. Can I read that for you all again? Listen, if our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, then, O oh King, let our God deliver us. But listen, but if not, if our God is not able to deliver us, if our God is not willing to deliver us, if our God for some reason does not deliver us, we believe that standing on our dreams, standing on our principles, standing on our dignity, standing up for ourselves, Standing up for our God is worth the fight, even if we lose. How do you know when to fight? If ever something so is so important to you that it's worth losing. If something is ever so important to you that it's worth losing the fight. For Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, standing up for God was so important, they were willing to lose their life. I tell people all the time, I'm too old. I don't want to fight anymore. 
But there are some certain things that are worth fighting, even if I lose. Protecting my child, that's worth fighting for, even if I lose. Beloved, there are some principles that are worth fighting for, even if we lose. There are times in the journey of our church, there have been people in our church, both members and leaders alike, who have questioned our commitment to giving 10% to our community. As we were growing in our church before we had our own facility, so often uh, we ran across uh, the idea uh, that I so well understood that people believe we shouldn't be giving money to other people when we don't have everything we have. But beloved, I really believe that when God called me to start this church, God called me to start a church that was different. God called me to start a church that was committed to the community. God called me to start a church that gave no matter what. I was willing to lose that fight. I've told people before, that's one of the fights in our life, in the life of our church, that I'm willing to lose my tenure as pastor over that fight. <clears throat> I believe that you have not lived life. Martin Luther King says something like this. If you've not found something worth dying for. There are certain things that are worth losing the fight. There are certain things that are worth losing the relationship. There are certain things that are worth losing the opportunity. And I want to argue that when you find those things that God has instilled in you, those core values, those things that are uncompromisable, unnegotiable, then that's when it's time to fight. Every head bowed, every eye closed, every heart pray. God, today we love you, we honor you, and we bless you. And we thank you for the model and the example of Shadrach, of Meshach, and of Abednego. God, sometimes we come into moments in our life where we have to stand up for ourselves, stand up for you, stand up for our beliefs, stand up for our dreams, stand up for our ambitions. And God, when we stand up for these things, we're never guaranteed that we will win. God, sometimes life puts us in a situation where we have to stand up, we have to fight, and, and risk the cost of losing. Today, God, I'm praying that you would give us the strength to fight for those things we believe in, to fight for those just causes, to fight for you, God, to fight for our dreams, to fight for our ambitions, to fight for our future, to fight for our destiny, even if it costs us something. Today, we look at this text and we see Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego bravely go before the king and say, King, we've got to do what we believe in, even if it costs us our lives. King, we've got to follow our God, even if we lose. God, give us the courage and the conviction to fight God, even if we stand the risk of losing. Touch someone today, God. Move someone today, God. Bless someone today, God. And bless them, God, to the point to give them bravery, give us fortitude, give us will, give us strength to fight those fights worth fighting. God, today I want to come praying for those who we've called by name. And so today I want to lift up Priscilla Hughes and Kim Allen, Lorraine Tesoro, Matthew Johnson, and Myra Johnson. I'm lifting up today um, Ayana Shanta China and Daryl Palmer, Sean Lewis, Leon Martin, and Valeria Boykin and family. I'm lifting up today Raiden Matthews, Didi Holm Wickfall and family, Felicia and Allison Holmes, Gloria Robinson, Anaya and Erica Fielding, Robert and Chris Frazier, Archie and Audrey Davis, Arthur Risper Jr., Javante Cynthia Bryan Risper, Charisse Davis and family, Denise McNeil and family, Peyton Noah Nash Paris, Retrende Miniweather and family, Lakia Jones, Kelly Meadows, Michael Meadows, Brian Gordon, and Michelle Gordon. Today, God, I lift Annie Murphy, Gloria Robinson, and Carolyn. Merit. Today, God, I'm lifting Janie Anderson, Olivia Thompson, Quanda White, Tanisha Davis, Miko Graham, Keandria Timmons, Haley Butcher, Craig Epps, Joy Treadwell, Julie Huang, Ruthie Prophet, Patty and Patricia Perry, Tracy Blackwell, James Walker, and Heather Manley. You know every circumstance that needs touching. God, today I'm lifting up Kanika Sloan um, Williams, God. You know every person who needs healing. God, I pray, God, that you would touch right now like you've never touched before, that you would heal right now like you've never healed before, that you would bless right now like you've never blessed before. God, under the sound of my voice, there are people with dreams that need to be fulfilled. Under the sound of my voice, there are people with goals that need to be reached. 
God, I am asking that you would release an anointing of victory over the lives of everyone who can hear my voice. Today, God, I'm praying that distraction will not win. Today, God, I'm praying that doubt will not win. Today, God, I'm praying that low self-esteem will not win. Today, God, I'm praying that our enemies or no adversary will win. Today, God, I'm praying that our haters will not win. But today I'm praying for an anointing of victory, God. Victory over sickness, victory over disease, victory over depression, victory over addiction, victory over doubt, victory over fear. God, I'm praying right now for a spirit of victory. God, give someone strength they never believed they had. Give someone might they never believed they possessed. Give someone endurance they didn't think they had in them. Give someone stamina they didn't when they were ready to give up, God. I'm praying that you would give an anointing in our lives, over our lives, and for our lives, God. Bless us, God, until we cannot receive anymore. Fill our cups until it overflows, God. Wash us, God, with your worship. Cleanse us, God, with your love. Strengthen us, God, with your power. But be an ever-present person and presence in our lives. God, we pray this prayer believing that it's already done. We pray this prayer, believing that you've already moved. And God, we pray this prayer, believing that what you have declared in eternity will manifest itself in time. And when it does, and as it does, we promise to give you the glory and we promise to give you the praise. This is our prayer. We pray it in the loving, liberating, and life-giving name of Jesus. Amen and thank God. Amen, amen, amen. Beloved, I want to thank you for joining us in our check-in today. Uh, you could have done anything else. You could have been anywhere else, but you chose to be here, and I'm grateful for you. Um, I'm grateful to you, uh, and I pray that you all have a good weekend. We're in church. This first Sunday in December is Communion Sunday, so I pray that wherever you find yourself over the weekend, that Sunday at 10 a.m., you find yourself at 349 Kenwood Road, and if somehow you cannot make us make it physically. I pray that you would show up virtually. I got to go, you all, but I want to touch and agree with you. And so Yolanda Davidson and Patricia Deacon Burton, I'm touching and agreeing with you. Dina and Lisa, I'm touching and agreeing with you. May God bless each and every one of you. I'm touching and agreeing with you, Claudette Henry. May God bless each and every one of you. May God keep each and every one of you. And please remember to live in love. Y'all have a great weekend. Jane Powell, I'm touching and agreeing with you as